I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living Leo, Nicaragua. Today we're going to be talking about a little bit of stuff in the news. So it's going to be a little bit different then, but sometimes we cover this stuff. So it's, it's not really that different. A quick reminder before we get into anything today is the live stream. So I'm doing my best to get this video out before the live stream, but it is going to be a mad rush. I don't even know how we're going to manage to do that. My day has been insanely busy and I'm recording this at 4:30, trying to get it out by 5 30. I honestly don't know how we're going to do this. So I'm going as fast as I can trying to get stuff out for you. But uh, today is the live stream. So be sure to tune in for that around about six o'clock. All right. Today, we're going to be talking about the changes to the parole program, especially as it, as it pertains to Nicaraguans who are going to the US. If you're not Nicaraguan or American, this probably doesn't matter to you. But it is actually an interesting point of what's going on in the world for an awful lot of people and does show changes in uh, political climate, in um, how migration is going to be being handled and being promoted in different areas. So if you're looking at potentially visiting or especially moving to Nicaragua, these are changes that may impact you, even though you are yourself not not American or Nicaraguan. And many of you are American or Nicaraguan. So understanding exactly what is changing because the news has a tendency to be a little bit sensational and not always super accurate could be valuable. So we're going to dig into that uh, on a relatively short episode today. I'll see you after the bump. For those not familiar, the parole program has been a system by which uh, people from Nicaragua, Venezuela, Cuba, and Haiti have been able to go to the United States on a two-year program in which during which time they're able to potentially get a job, establish a life, and then maybe somehow uh, stay in the United States uh, further. Now, everyone has a different story as to what they are, are trying to do. I know some people who've attempted to do it for education reasons. Some people go and want to immediately return. Some people go and want to, you know, find a life and stay in North America. And I apologize for any crunching in the background. My dog is nervously eating her food as we have a dog visiting us in the other room. And uh, so that's kind of the basics of the program. But the expectation and the way it's been working is at the end of the two years, you can get an extension as long as you're doing a, you know, you're being a good citizen or whatever. And you could stay for quite a long time, potentially indefinitely under the program. Now, not so long ago, and we did a short on this, the parole program was rescinded temporarily, not permanently, just put on a pause while they they worked out some kinks. They did that and it returned not that long ago. So it's up and running again, but there's been an important change to it. The Biden administration in the United States has stopped renewals for the parole program after you hit the two years. So anyone who hits two years on the parole program is automatically unable to extend. That's not an option for anybody. But importantly, if you are Venezuelan, Cuban, or Haitian, and you hit your two years, you are able to more or less transparently move over to one of many uh, specialty programs for people from those countries to be able to stay in the United States. Uniquely, Nicaraguans, when they hit the end of their parole two years, they have no extension options. There's no other program in the United States at this time that they can apply for as Nicaraguans. They would have to have fully established residency, uh, which is nearly impossible during that time. Not completely impossible, but very, very difficult uh, as generally it expects you to have established a career and have a job that is going to sponsor you at great expense and risk to themselves. It's very different than the parole program. So this does not mean that the parole program is being canceled. This does kind of sound that way, but that is not what's happening. It is being limited to being purely a two-year thing. So because of that, uh, many people who work in now, this basically is no effect if you're Venezuelan, Haitian, or Cuban. It does have some technical details. It changes the paperwork you do. It does make you have to stop and plan a little bit differently. That is true. But it is not a fundamental change for those people. But for Nicaraguans who have been in great numbers going to the United States under the parole program, which it's, I've seen numbers as high as 99% of Nicaraguans entering the United States over the last like three years have been through the parole program. And of people I know, every person who's gone to the United States has used parole as their mechanism to do so. So what we hear on that from the news from the North and what we see on the ground from people actually doing it line up that the parole program is very, very popular and the method by which people are heading to the United States uh, from this area. Um, 
those people traditionally have had a very high percentage, not all by any stretch, but a very high percentage of people doing that have done so with the intent of staying in the United States. They would go up and say, well, I'm going to start on the parole. I will get an extension. And over time, I will find a way uh, to move that into a permanent thing, which of course makes a lot of sense. Why else would you be doing it? Well, you might be doing it because you just want to get a little bit of experience in the United States. Of course, you want to practice your English. You want to try out a little job. You just want to add it to your resume. Of course, those things are fine. But it's easy to see why those aren't the majority. The majority is, well, I'd like to go get into a job and start working my way towards something, not spend a whole bunch of time, find a job, and then have to return. So this is the expectation of the program most of the time. So loads and loads of Nicaraguans have been going to the United States with this kind of hope that they would be staying long term. And now anyone who is heading to the United States or is already there is either having those hopes dashed that basically there is no extension possible. Um, there, Of course, there's a way to get an extension, but they're individual um, and they're not assumed and they're extremely difficult. Uh, or uh, more likely, they are simply now having to only go to the United States if their plan is to stay for two years or if their plan is to become illegal after two years, which of course people do as well. So, um, of course, from the American perspective, this seems like an incentive towards illegal immigration, right? The parole program's theory was that uh, people were going to migrate to the United States no matter what. It would be best if we gave them a legal framework for doing so to keep people safe and to keep their from being undocumented people off the records, not paying taxes in the U.S. This seems to be a move to promote a move to non-taxpayers who are below minimum wage. It's pretty bad uh, what the expected results are going to be. And of course, from a Nicaraguan perspective, it's a, well, what is the point of this thing? Why would you bring us up for just two years? What What is there to gain from that? And so, um, you know, we're going to see a, a very big change. Exactly what it's going to do, we don't know. But in Nicaragua, right, this is a really huge change. However, how many Nicaraguans are aware of it, right? It's not like the United States necessarily sends out an announcement uh, to Nicaraguan citizens and says, oh, everyone else is okay, but you, we're changing something and it only affects you. And here's what the results are going to be. It, they generally are going to be left up to themselves. And of course, the people who are trying to help them get to the United States to take advantage of the parole program aren't going to mention that the change two years down the road has happened. Uh, they'll say, no, the parole is still available. We can get you in. And, uh, and then they find out two years later that the extensions don't exist. But for people who are keeping up and are aware of what is happening, I think this is going to cause a real drop off in people interested in going to the United States under the parole program, at least because it just makes it so little value. It's very hard to justify spending all the costs to get to and from the United States only. And, and then, of course, you have to live there and you have to generally like I know people who are there under parole and don't have jobs right now. They may only go a month or two months without a job, just like any American. You get there and, uh, you know, you lose a job. How long does it take you to find one? A little bit of time right now. Imagine if you are from Nicaragua, you probably don't speak English. How long is it going to take you to find a job? Probably a little bit longer. So people who are coming up under the parole program, let's just say it takes you two months. Uh, let's say it takes just over about 2.2 .2 months to find find your job. Well, that's 10% of your total time under the parole is spent looking for a job. If for some reason you lose a job, you could easily end up at 20, 25% of your time without a job as an average, right? Not, not even saying like any given person could never find a job, right? That that's a possibility. And all during that time, you have to pay for food in the United States, which is outrageously expensive compared to Nicaragua. You have to pay for housing or you have to live with someone that you know in the United States. There's a lot of complexities come up during that time. And of course, you have to get to the U.S. and you have to get back from the U.S. Well, there doesn't leave you, uh, that doesn't leave you very much time in it to actually accumulate enough uh, income to pay for all of this uh, during that time. So that's, that's a very difficult situation. Um, with the parole being as short as it, as it is without a serious hope of extension at the end. So uh, my expectation is, is that we're going to see a very large drop off of Nicaraguans who are interested in going to America, but we're also very likely going to see a very large uptick in uh, Nicaraguans who are staying in the United States illegally 
probably entering under parole and then not leaving at the end of parole because what else are they going to do? They're not being given another option. They're just being deported. Uh, and so and now it's not forcible de deportation. It's simply the end of their visa program. Uh, but if, if your visa is ended uh, when you don't want it to be, that is a form of deportation. It's not a hard deportation. It's not the kind of deportation that people get upset about, but it is deportation. You are removed from the country uh, or at least advised to be. And then if you get caught, of course, you actually are. So it's uh, uh, not a great situation. And it's unclear why Nicaragua is being singled out as the only country that is going to be actually affected by this. It's being changed in such a way that it sounds like a general rule. But when you actually dig into it, it is a rule that through a bunch of generalities applies only to Nicaraguans. So uh, it's unclear why it is being treated this way and what the expectation is, uh, what the idea behind a good outcome would be from offering a parole program with only two years available. What scenario are they picturing uh, that being a positive one? I don't know. Uh, but that is where we are. So that is what's going on. So uh, that had, the parole program has acted as a huge uh, siphon to, to suck workers out of Nicaragua. And this, I expect, is going to basically shut that off. And so we will probably see a very big change as to who is staying and who is leaving Nicaragua in the months going forward. Um, and while in some ways this could negatively impact Nicaragua uh, in that um, remittance and other uh, forms of income coming from the north and flowing into Nicaragua may slow down, but on the other hand, a sh working a work force shortfall that we have had here in Nicaragua may soon be fixed. And we may have that, that high productivity middle tier of workers returning uh, to the market in large numbers. So uh, we will see how that plays out, but it's definitely going to have an impact on both countries and many countries in the region. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Uh, we have our new membership. There's a join button. It'd be amazing if any of you decided to join and be a part of our little community uh, officially. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And if you're watching this in real time, in just a little bit on the live stream.